We're talking with Dr. Marcio Fagundes, Medical Director of Provision Center for Proton Therapy. Marcio, welcome to the Dr. Bob Show. Thank you for having me. How long have you been involved in radiation treatment? Uh, more than 20 years. I, I finished my training around 1993. Where were you training the, then? I was training at the University of Miami in residency. And you went? Then I went to Harvard to do training in proton therapy around 1994. So that's around 20 years ago. One of the leading places in the world. Yeah. Tell me about proton therapy and prostate cancer. Who is a, who is a good qualified person for therapy with prostate cancer? Well, prostate cancer, fortunately, most of the cancers we diagnose are still localized. So we can treat localized cancers with the, with the goal of curing the patient. So patients that have early stage cancer can be treated with a very high probability of cure. Even patients that have cancer that may have spread to the lymph nodes can still be cured. So if the, the cancer is spread to the lymph nodes, does the proton therapy include the lymph node or we just get the, the big cancer that's inside the prostate gland? Yeah, so when we're talking about a slightly more advanced disease uh -huh. like that has reached lymph nodes, we do treat the prostate, seminal vesicles, and lymph nodes. So let's go back to an isolated tumor in the prostate gland. What is proton beam therapy and why is it an advantage over other forms of treatment? Well, proton therapy, just to understand, is the most advanced form of cancer therapy utilizing radiation. Now, we don't use x-rays, which is conventional radiation. We use particles. Particles stop in the body at a very controlled depth. So we can send the particles as deep as needed, and when they reach the cancer, the particles stop and deposit that radiation energy right where you need it avoiding any radiation in the surrounding tissues. So that's the key issue. You can guide it, stop it, rather than what other type? Well, what yeah. happens with routine radiation? Right, so, so some patients will say to me, you know, th this is like, uh, you know, protons is like shooting a rifle, you know, with a sharp aim where, where conventional radiation is like a shotgun where you, you, you spread the dose quite a bit more exposing normal organs around the target area. And that's true. But there's also the concept that you need to understand that protons, we stop it. So you go as deep as you need and not further. So it does spare a lot of the surrounding tissues around the prostate. So what are the tissues that surround the prostate that we want to be careful not to get radiation damage? Well, basically, when we treat the prostate gland, we treat a, a slight margin around it uh, that will include a little bit of the bladder, a little bit of the rectum. And that's what we need to do. That's it. Now, um, if you do conventional radiation, you're going to be including more of the bladder, more of the rectum than needs to be done. So proton therapy is more selective. So let's give an example of both regular radiation therapy, x-ray therapy, and proton beam therapy about it stops. What is the, the other one doesn't stop. Well, what happens if it doesn't stop? Well, basically, we, we, this, that's the concept of the beam coming in, entrance dose, reaching the target and exiting the other side of the body. So there's exit dose. So the bottom line is conventional radiation will deposit dose beyond what you really need outside of your targeted area. So we were looking at an image, right, where the beam comes with protons and it stops right on the prostate gland. And in conventional radiation, you have these beams of radiation that come from different directions, ultimately traversing the body and treating more than is needed. So what we've got is an isolated proton active particles that deposit radiation and stop it right there rather than continuing to the rest of the prostate gland and surrounding areas. Right. Now there's something very important is that proton therapy has evolved from what we used to do 20 years ago, now using something called pencil beam scanning. So that allows us to intensify the number of spots that we want in one specific area of the prostate versus another. And we can de-intensify or decrease the amount of dose that reaches the rectum or the bladder. So proton therapy today, what we use at ProVision today, is superior to what was available five years ago or 10 years ago. Wow, so it's getting better and better. Right. And the thing that's making the proton 
pencil beam therapy better again is what? Is the ability to send the proton spot by spot where you put more dose in one area, less dose on another. That gives you even more selectivity or the ability to, to, to better select where you need the dose and so, what you need to avoid. So you don't need surgery. Well, you know, when we talk to patients that come in with diagnosis for prost with prostate cancer, we talk to them about options. Yes, you can do proton therapy without doing surgery, absolutely. Surgery is another option. You can choose to do surgery. Uh, conventional radiation is available, but we have t we're talking about the disadvantages and advantages and the advantages of protons. What are some of the big side effects of, of proton beam therapy? If you send the particles pencil beam, you stop them, you deposit the radiation. Are there side effects that are significant? You know, a little sliver of the neighboring organs, basically the bladder and the rectum, receive some dose, but a smaller dose than conventional radiation. So, you know, you could tell the patient, well, you know, it, it's, it's expected that you may feel a little bit of, 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 of a need to urinate more frequently during treatment, during the several weeks of treatment. Um, but that tends to go away about a month later. It's very rare that a patient would have any intestinal side effects from treatment. Now, intestinal, are you talking about the colon? Do you get Yeah, loose, like loose, loose stools or, or diarrhea, proctitis, very, very rare. Yes. So you isolate it, you don't get the side effects, you have the, how long does the therapy take? Okay, it, the, it, treatment, the treatment actually laying down for treatment only takes about a minute or so to deliver the dose from each side. There are two, two fields, one from the left, one from the right that are treated for prostate cancer. Now, total time laying down, doing imaging for, for uh, precision aiming, setting up the patient, everything, when set, all said and done, it's about 15 minutes maybe 18 minutes per day, Monday through Friday, five days a week, and this may go on for seven and a half weeks. So it can go on for seven weeks, so you have to make sure that you're available for that treatment that, for that period of time. Does, do the symptoms uh, change from week one to week two to week three to week four? Does the patient it, know anything's it, going on? It takes a few weeks, you know, for the patient to even notice anything, and, and, and this irritation to urinate a little bit more frequent is, is very minor and it may you know, show up about the fourth week into treatment. Now it's important to, to mention that patients don't feel anything as they're having a treatment. They're basically laying down, they don't feel anything. They get up and they can go about their business, exercise, work, uh, continue normal diet uh, during treatment, and there are no immediate side effects. Now if somebody's having the radiation, the proton beam therapy, how do you identify exactly where the beam goes? It seems like that would be critical. Yes, and for that we use image guidance. Okay, that's a very important question. Image guided treatment delivery. So we place these gold markers inside the prostate, these tiny little markers. We only do this once. It's a very thin needle. We numb up the skin and place them inside the prostate. We call them fiducial markers. Every day before treatment, we do a very quick x-ray, very low dose x-ray to verify that those markers are precisely where they should be. And, and then we deliver the treatment. So it's, it, it's really guided with, with image guidance, if you would, to, act, to, to assure accuracy. So I anticipate that you have to spend a great deal of time or a few minutes of time making sure the patient is positioned uh, yes. exactly, doesn't move. Is it hard not moving while you're having the treatment? If the patient is comfortable, that's one of the main things, is to have the patient laying down in a comfortable position. They are able to hold still and, and just, you know, we, sometimes we have their favorite music playing and keep them relaxed. It's only about 15 minutes. Yeah. And, and when the patient leaves, are they able to go about their normal activities totally, each day? Totally, totally normal. And that's what we're going to be talking about later on. Let's walk through a patient. Let's walk through their treatment. Let's see what kind of problems they do or they don't have and how successful the treatment is. Very, very exciting. We're talking with Dr. Marcio Pagundes, the medical director of the Provision Center for Proton Therapy located in Knoxville. Now, it's in Knoxville. How many centers are there right now? Uh, there are 17 centers in the country right now. We were the 13th center to open. And it's interesting that proton therapy is growing so much that in two years, there'll be nearly 30 centers in the country. So why is it growing? And my answer would be, 
Because it's such a good form of treatment for patients. Yes, yes. It, it's, a, it's a more advanced form of doing radiation. It's more selective. So all the, end, the major NCI designated cancer centers in the country, like Mayo Clinic has two centers, one already open, one is opening next year. Uh, MD Anderson has a center. Sloan Kettering is, is partner to develop a center. Johns Hopkins will develop a center. Harvard has their own. So all so these are big names, and now all these got, are big names. And we've got one of the thirteen and initial have, ones in Knoxville, have, Tennessee. Yep, yep. Thank you for coming and being our medical director here, because I just think that gives worlds of accreditation for your experience that you've had. Now let's get back to to the treatment. Somebody has the diagnosis of prostate cancer. It hasn't spread to the bones or anywhere else, and they come into your office and they're nervous. They've got cancer. They want to know what the treatment is. What options do you give them? Well, so a patient that has localized cancer still confined to the prostate, right? There are four proven modalities that one could look at currently that have long track record, that have been used for many, many years. And certainly surgery would be one of them. Another would be conventional radiation. We talked about that. Another would be a seed implant or brachytherapy, which I did for many, many years. And then proton radiotherapy. And these are the options that one should really be looking at. So why are you such an advocate of the proton beam therapy? This is the issue that I want to get to because it's really so great and I'm so excited about it. Why in your mind is this so much better? Well, I mean, proton therapy, number one, is non-invasive, right? It doesn't require anesthesia. Um, if you look at the results from the older study from Mass General, Massachusetts General Hospital in Loma Linda, in the newer study that was published out of the University of Florida Proton Center, you'll see that the probability of a patient being disease-free, proven by PSA, five years after treatment, is in the order of 99%. That is patients with localized disease. If we look at longer term, say 10, 15 years later, that may drop a bit down to about 95, 94. But if you compare to the other treatments available in the, in, in, in the country, su such as surgery and others, it's going to be in the same level of success. So the bottom line is that it's a treatment that is, is as successful but non-invasive. Now let me talk to you about some side effects. The conventional treatment, if we've got radiation implants, some seeds, radiation therapy, uh, people have problems with Proctitis, what, it, what, would, what would that be, proctitis? Proctitis would be inflammation uh, of the rectal wall, right? Uh, right where the rectum that, that abuts the prostate, right there. So we try to minimize the amount of radiation that reaches that area uh, of the rectum to minimize the risks of such, such a problem happening. Pretty good at that? Yeah, we're pretty good at that. And, yeah. and so we've got less uh, irritation of the colon. How about urinary symptoms. How about incontinence? Incontinence, we just don't see your, your urinary incontinence with proton therapy. We just don't. Um, you know, a patient would have to be very advanced age, maybe have underlying problems like diabetes, hypertension, vascular disease, maybe already have some incontinence already as, as this baseline problem to maybe say, well, maybe this increased a little bit after treatment. But in a patient that is otherwise normal functioning, controlling his urine, we don't see incontinence. We just don't. For the viewer's education, we've got the kidneys. They send the urine to the bladder. And then through the male urethra, which, the urethra, which carries the urine from the bladder to the outside, that's where the prostate gland is around that. Right. So when you hone in with proton beam therapy, you don't mess around with the urethral tube. You, you just irritate the urethra temporarily, just for a, for a few weeks. The urethra is very tolerant. You can actually deliver very high doses of radiation to the radiation dose to the urethra without causing any permanent issues with it. So there's temporary inflammation, which we treat with very simple medicines, such as an anti-inflammatory, maybe a Flomax. And that's about it. So right now, the side effects, how about no proc proctitis is taken care of, the incontinence we don't see. How about erectile dysfunction? Erectile dysfunction, you know, we expect one out of five patients, one out of five, 20% risk, that the patients would have some decrease in erections after treatment. That is realistic, uh, you know, expectation. Do medications help that? Can there, they can. They can. So there can be ways to circumvent that. Yes. Is there less problems with erectile dysfunction problems 
uh, with proton beam versus surgery versus radiation? Versus surgery, if you look at surgical data, it's probably more like a 50 percent, you know, 50 percent risk. Um, so, I, yeah, proton therapy is a lower risk. Yes. And there's no surgery, so you don't have blood loss. Right. So, really, the, the things that are wrong with traditional forms of surgery seem to be circumvented with the proton beam therapy. How accurate are you at honing in and putting the proton beam and stopping it right where you want it? That's a great question. You know, protons, uh, the, the, the accuracy, we measure this on quality assurance measures. We have devices to measure. Yeah. And it is about a two millimeter precision where the protons stop. So that is built into the plan. So when we define this is our target, this is an expansion around it. So if we cover the expansion of a few millimeters beyond it, we know we're covering the target. So that's how we assure that we're accurately treating all we need to treat. When you have patients that are looking at a, making a decision on type of treatment, uh, we were talking about a physician who mm -hmm. really asked well over 100 people uh, what their problems were and what their side effects were, and they came to proton therapy. Uh, are there any disadvantages to proton therapy? It's really the only disadvantage you could say is that you have to come in every day for treatment, Monday through Friday, you know, for several weeks. but you're only in the building for less than an hour, 15 minutes laying down, and if you can, if you can, you know, accommodate that in your schedule, but be perfectly functional throughout the rest of the time with no recovery, no anesthesia. Uh, it's a no-brainer. Right, exactly. Now, as we get older, we don't get very comfortable as we're laying down sometimes on a hard old table. Is this a hard table? What do you do to make the patient comfortable? There are ways to make devices that will accommodate the patient's back and buttock to make it more comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Um, it just seems like it's a wonderful thing. Dr. Pagundes, thank you for coming to the Dr. Bob Show. Proton beam therapy sends the proton radiation where it's directed right on top of the cancer, mm -hmm. destroys the cancer, the follow-up, no recurrence later on. What a, what a great thing. What a great advancement for people in the United States. Thank you for coming to Knoxville. Thank you for having me. Thank you for providing this service to, uh, to our people. You've been a great teacher and I thank you.